Well, hello, and here we are. I was not planning on doing a video today at all, but I, you know, rearranged my whole house this morning for the fun of it, I guess. Sure. Um, and then I decided to play around with, you know, this that I got yesterday. I promise this isn't all about makeup. And this other Tarte palette that I do have. So, hmm. played around with those and um, thought, why make this go to waste? Because while I was getting all this stuff done, you know, the inbox messages were coming because some of you guys, you know, DMs. And uh, again, it was some fake profile of whatever. So I decided to film a video about two things. One, how to kind of recognize a fake profile. Someone that's, you know, not really them. I mean, I what their end game is, I don't know, because I usually like piece that way before that. And then the second part is something that I have going on in the computer over there, where, you know, I'm talking about why and how it's now part of my job, part of my responsibilities to notify when I find or come across fake accounts. <laughs> that makes me sound like the internet police or something. I'm not. I just think about everybody else and I mean, I've worked in fraud prevention before so I do understand what can happen and what you know is a horrible you know, it's just bad if the end part happens but my face is still a little bit swollen my eyes are still quite swollen because i have this voila i have this trojan syndrome something i can't say but basically what it does is um it makes all of the mucus parts of your body be really really dry so your eyes, your mouth, other body parts, not fun. But once you have one autoimmune disease, you kind of have them all. And this is eosinophilic esophagitis, which is what I have in my digestive tract. And why I've lost so much weight over this past year, because I had to change my diet in order to prevent this from killing me. That's why I ended up losing 100 pounds. In order for the, you know, eosinophilic esophagitis, so that basically means the eosinophil, so the white blood cells in my esophagus, from stopping to multiply so much that I couldn't eat food and, and, you know. I had to completely change my diet, and I did. I still eat really yummy stuff, I'm very happy, and a nice side effect of all that change happens that I lost weight. And I also feel better. That's, that's the big thing. My liver is back at a place where it's no longer considered in danger. My kidneys they have gotten better. They're still not perfect. Waiting for a specialist, but whatever. Get there eventually. Um, <clears throat> for everything else, things are slowly kind of falling into place. But that's what I'm dealing with. So, not that mad. I mean, it could be worse. So let's address why I say that it's now part of my job and my responsibility on the internet to report fake profiles. Yes. So... You've all probably heard me talk about Cora.com because I love that website. I have a time of my life and I'm going to show you my profile and a few of my favorite answers. But there's also Facebook. I mean, and I do this for free for Facebook just because they asked me, you know, to if I see any things to report them. So in my report, you know, a profile, my report something, I have a little bit more options than most general public do. Not because I'm anything special, just because I tend to report things and they've noticed that I can kind of help, you know? There's, there's thousands and other people out there that have the same options on Facebook that I do. So there is reporting a like fake profile, obviously. Reporting fake news, that's now a new option in Facebook where you can click on something and it can be reported as fake news and then Something else pops up now from the last month or so where if I click and I say that this story is fake news, it will ask if I know of a website to direct people with the correct information. And like, not just like Snopes.com, but like, you know, real, you know, legitimate things with concrete answers to say that whatever I just read was bananas. So that's kind of neat. Um, I think they're rolling it out. So look out for that if you ever see a fake news or something that you think looks really weird for new stuff, 
look underneath you might have this little it's not as dark it's kind of like a grayed out because they're trying to test to see if people can pay attention to it or not but it will give you the option and i'll say like this story has been you know flagged as potentially you know incorrect here is another version hey i'm not going to complain for great information out there but when it comes to cora.com that's my baby that's what i love love doing and I was super surprised last year to be named top writer for 2018. Now, there's not just me. There's, there's a bunch of people that were named top writer. But I had been on the platform for like maybe a year and a half. I didn't see it coming at all. I was super surprised. Um, never thought it would be something that I would be making money for. And then recently I got offered to be in their partnership program. So, of course, I jumped on it because, I mean... They're going to pay me to do what I do every single day for fun anyway. Sure. So the partnership program really goes down to me asking questions that are going to have the kind of answers that people are going to want to buy and reproduce because those little Facebook, you know, little side stories that you read, like articles and stuff that are just written by freelance writers because you can make a living of that these days, by the way. Um... When they want to find answers, a lot of answers come from Quora.com. As a writer, as someone who answers questions or someone who asks questions or just a member of Quora completely, every time you answer something or every time you ask a question, you have the option to click if it's for reproduction or not. So yes, if you click not for reproduction on anything that you write on Quora, nobody can buy it, nobody can add it into their little articles that they want to do. But if you don't click that, it's kind of a free-for-all. And one thing that I love the most is when the hardcore Trumpsters, because let's call them that, go on there and they're like, this has nothing to do with the Second Amendment. And people will write back with, buddy, this isn't the United States of America. This is the Internet. We can, your amendments, your rights, your whatever don't have nothing to do with anything. Now, there is one rule on Quora. And it's the BN, BR rule. Be nice, be respectful. Now with that though, I mean, if you think about me and you're asking like, okay, she likes to tell people where to go, like, be nice. Yes, because the funny thing about Cora, which I love, is if you ask a stupid question, you can give a stupid answer, all right? I have a few examples over here that I think are funny. But when it comes to like, the legitimacy of Cora, it's quite up there. And when it comes to your credentials, like anybody can join. Um, Justin Trudeau has an account on there. He answers questions sometimes. Not judging if you like him or not. Same thing goes for Barack Obama. He has an account on there. He answers questions every once in a while. You know, his credentials is former, you know, whatever. But then there's people that will, you know, answer a question about something about being a teenager. And their credential to be able to answer that question is, I'm a teenager. Great, that's actually true. And some people will answer a question about like Ireland and their and again their qualifications for answering a question about Ireland is that they live in Ireland. So that's kind of neat how there's meetings of the minds. You don't have to have a university degree in order to be able to be an intelligent person and answer questions. I don't know who this is. Okay, speaking, speaking of fraudulent stuff, I don't know who that is. I ain't answering it. Now, sometimes I, I used to, my other phone's still ringing. Yeah, people fish for information all the time. I have no idea who those people are. But when I'm talking about that people in high esteem, sure, have accounts on Quora, one of my favorite celebrity ones to follow is Jennifer Lawrence. She answers questions all the time, and this is one of my favorite ones from her, so I'm going to show it to you. As you can see, someone asked the question, why are there so many pictures of Jennifer Lawrence showing the middle finger? And if you scroll down and you scroll down, you will eventually, yeah, David Hasselhoff, I don't know. You'll eventually come to Jennifer Lawrence herself answering the question, and her answer is, because I'm an asshole. I love that. She's answering for herself. So in Cora again, um, yes, if we go over to my account. Now, this is my 
page of me. Um, super happy that I got to be top rider last year. Super hoping next year again. I don't know. I also have a French where I answer in French and whatnot because I do speak French. So, yeah. That's me. That's my account. That's just me. And one of the rules, though, again, there's two rules, I guess. Be nice, be respectful. And then there is the, you have to use your actual real name as an account. So, again, I play on this for fun. I like answering questions. Sometimes, you know, it's legit questions where people really want to know answers to. That's great. And then you have, you know, as any member of Quora, again, you can upvote an answer, downvote an answer, or you can report it. You can report questions for being a not sincere question, which I just did the other day, because it was all about like how to get illegal drugs. And people were answering with this website that you should get. Like, no, they're not there to, you know, propagate anything. But there is no subject on Quora that is out of bounds. There's questions that I've answered on there about sexuality side because Back in a few years ago, I worked at an adult toy store because I'm not afraid to talk about my sexuality. Um, so I'm obviously in those subjects as well. So some questions are, but it doesn't matter. So yeah, I answer questions and like a bazillion subjects because I like it, it's fun. Some of them are funny, some of them are very serious answers, but Recently, again, like I said, Cora approached me and they were like, look, we're looking for partnership people. And I'm like, what the heck is this? Like, paid thing? And yeah, it was. So I looked it up and of course I joined. So most of it is me asking questions that are going to get a lot of people to answer. And those are like questions that people want to buy the answers for. You know, kind of help them make money. But they're going to pay me. So I get paid per people that answer, people per view my answer. Because it also goes with my answers as well to other questions. And I haven't been that active since I, you know, said yes to the partnership. Because it was the whole, like, moving thing and that was just, whew. But now, sat there, had time to just play with it a little bit more. And, I mean, just that on its own can make me more than I made at my part-time job. If I put the effort into it. And that works for anything in the world. If you put the effort into it, right? So I do have a few questions on there that I personally think are super funny as answers. Yes, I have a hard time talking. I hard time enunciating. I can't talk. Whew. It's a side effect of ADHD. My brain goes faster than my mouth can process the words. Take a look at that because I promise I will get to you to try to let you know how you can recognize a fake profile. Because, oh, I almost forgot. Part of the partnership thing is, yeah, downvote things, report things, like I said, the other question that wasn't genuine, but also to report fake accounts, people that, you know, mm. and I've never run into a fake account that I had to report on Quora yet, but I did run into one, you know, just earlier today on Facebook. So we'll get to that in a minute, but I'm going to show you my funny answers. It takes about two minutes. We'll come back and talk about this serious stuff. So again, you can see this is my profile. This is me as my picture, my name, all my stuff. You can look at all my different credentials and highlights on the side. And this is public. Anybody can look at it. And it is linked in my social media. So you can go look at it. This is something that I'm extremely proud of. Again, I didn't know that I was going to be named Top Writer. And now that I'm kind of in that group, because I guess it's like an elitist thing. I don't know. I kind of want to stay there. So I'm hoping. So let's look at some of my funny answers. What made you become bisexual? I drank the milkshake. It's my answer. What do you look like in a revealing dress? My answer, that depends. Are you asking from my point of view, my lover's point of view, or the harsh critics of social media? Because that would give you three extremely different answers. Now that only has four upvotes but it has a lot of comments in the comment thread. And the next one is my funniest pride and joy one. One person says the world is ending on May 20th of this year. Another says it's ending on June 24th. Are these fake? I'm really terrified. 
So this one so far has 66 upvotes. So this was a meme I found on the internet for the movie 2012. Basically, if you don't know what this movie's about, it's about how the world was supposed to end on December 26, 2012, because that's what the Mayan calendar said. They made a whole movie about it. You know, what the heck his name is, John something, whatever. And basically the world ends and there's a few people at the end that survive and they're supposed to repopulate the earth. So this is my meme. I just, that's my answer. Gonna make my kids watch this movie and tell them I survived it. And then my little answer was six years later, it hasn't happened. I'm still waiting. Three years ago, when I was looking for a part-time job, because disability doesn't pay the bills, okay? The people of, you know, this area love to tell me how I wasn't disabled and blah, 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 blah. Fine. Think what you want. But they all told me that, hey, you can tape on the internet. You can get a job. And now my job is to answer questions on the internet. I don't think that's quite what they meant, but oh well, too bad. That's what I got. And with that, I'm going to share with you a quick things on how to recognize if somebody is sending you messages, you know, either through Facebook messages, you know, Instagram, all the other platforms, what are the red flags to look for if that person is a real person or not? Because I've obviously found a few and I've gotten the same story more than once on Instagram. Now the story that I've gotten more than once, and it's a little bit funny because it happens to be in my area of expertise. But anyway, it'll be a gentleman, a guy. It's usually a guy, you know, looking for a woman. The guy usually has a very nice picture, all buffed up and looks real whatever. Hey, hey, how you doing? What you're up, man? You know, sounds okay. And then they're like, well, I'm in the U.S. Navy or the U.S. military. It's usually the Navy or the military. And I'm currently stationed in Texas. And I work on electronics. That's roughly what the story is. And I've had that story about 20 times now on my No Holds Barred Instagram. So when they tell me they work with electronics, since, you know, embedded systems and design is my thing as an electrical engineer and technician, even though I suck at programming, I totally suck. It's the only class I could not pass. Anyway. Uh... I do know a little bit about programming, so my question is, what's your favorite language? And if they answer anything with French, English, German, Eng whatever, pff, beep the wrong. Because anybody who works with electronics, they know that when you ask what's your favorite language, you're talking programming language. So it's either going to be like C, you know, all the other kind of languages, Java, HTML, whatever. That would be the correct answer for someone who does work with electronics. Not English, French, whatever. So that's my red flag for me. That, that story, though, is extremely common. So if you get that story from someone, probably not. Very true. The second thing is how long has that account been open for? Now, Instagram is kind of hard to tell how long the account's been open for, but you can check how many pictures they have posted. If they don't have any pictures posted or they only have one picture posted and they follow like 2,000 people, that, that, not necessarily though, not necessarily, it just means think twice. And then the think twice part, this is the most important part, whether it doesn't matter what platform they're trying to talk to you on. Hmm. And it's a real, real easy one. If they can't spell, if their grammar is horrible, and they claim to be from either the United States or from Canada, but they're living abroad. There's no reason why their grammar should be that bad. And when I say that bad, I mean, you're going to recognize that their sentences, they don't make sense. And I mean, if they're native to North America and English is their first language, which they all claim to be, then writing and speaking in English should not be a problem. Now, if they tell you that they're originally from Spain or something, then, well, you know, maybe writing in English isn't their forte. But it, again, most of them tell story. So the story that I got actually this afternoon, um, picture of this, you know, very buff, good looking guy, adds you on Facebook. Okay, sure, whatever. Um, 
you know, good looking or not, that's not what I look for, but whatever. Hey, eye candy ain't gonna hurt. And he's been liking a few things here and there. And by the way, a lot of my friends here in New Brunswick, you're friends with this guy. Me and me not anymore because I do report him as a fake profile. So he starts talking to me and again, the English is broken. It's broken English. And he asks me where I live, Moncton. And he's like, oh, what state that in? Oh, wait, you're in Canada. So that red flag number one. Are you married? Now, if they jump into are you married within like the first five questions, back out, back out, back out. I, I don't know what they're in for, but usually people just want to marry someone from Canada so they can become a citizen. I don't know if that's the case in this guy, but he'd ask that. And then I kind of thought, you know, what well, you can't spell. So I asked him where he lived and um, told me that he lived in the UK. All right, that's great. But he was originally from Canada. Now that sends off a bunch of red flags. If I tell you that I live in Moncton and your first question is which state, but you're originally from Toronto, but then he said he lived in the UK. So then I asked him, well, which city in the UK? And his answer was London. Okay, right then and there, you know it's wrong. Because of this whole thing called Brexit. Now, most people in London, most people in Britain, no longer want Brexit to happen, but it's still happening. That's not the point. People who now live in Britain are not part of the UK. They're not in the United Kingdom. They're in Britain. It's a whole different country now because of Brexit. So anybody who lives in London, who is seriously a Londoner, would not say they live in the UK. They would actually say, I'm from London. They don't start with a country and then go with like the biggest city in Europe, okay? They would straight up say, I'm in London. Because most people in the world, they've heard of London. And then this guy picked Toronto as his hometown in Canada, which is the biggest town in Canada. So all those were red flags, obviously. Now, what do you do when you have someone that's talking to you? Do you have to report them? No, you don't have to. I mean, it's anonymous. You know, they're not going to know it's you. But your best bet, if you're talking to someone that, you know, gives you the, oh, I'm not too sure, just walk away. Just walk away, walk away. If it's someone like local, because you're on a dating app or a dating site or something like that, or even on Facebook and you have friends in common with that person, you have the option to, you know, take a break from someone. Like when you go to the block, it'll ask you, do you really want to block this person or do you want to take a break? And you can take a break or you just put them on mute so you can't see their answers for a little bit. Ask your friends about, you know, this person. You don't know, say, I have this person, we have it in common, they're talking to me, do you really know them? Like, are they okay or... Are they just shy or kind of stuff like that? That you know, Check with people. But mostly it goes with your gut. If you think that there's something off about a conversation with a stranger on the internet, then just walk away. Just go your own merry little way and leave them alone. Because what they intend on doing with things later on in life, I have no idea. But there's many. So one... The one that we hear about a lot here in Canada is, you know, the Nigerian printer scam and all those kind of things, right? I love reading my spam emails. I love reading them. Martha something is going to send me $6 million. She's sending about 10 emails about that so far. Um, you know, anything that's going to ask you, even if it's from, again, you think it's from your bank or the CRA or whatever, those places are never going to ask you for your SIN number, for your bank account number. They already have that. And part of their security protocol is to not ask you for it to begin with. So if you have any of that, but even if you have anything of an email part that you're not sure if it is from your bank, you're not sure if it is from the, you know, Canada Revenue Agency, don't answer the email, call your bank, call the government and ask them and say, yo, I've got this email. Is it really from you? If it is from your bank, they'll be like, yeah, it is. We just want to verify something. If it's not, they'll be like, nope. And then you should just click out, delete, leave, walk away. But again, when it comes down to talking person wise, what are they up to? Some of them will try to, you know, romance you, get some money out of you. Some people just want to get their way to Canada so they can stay here to get away from a bad situation somewhere else. Unfortunately, that happens. I can't watch that 90 Day Fiance thing. I think I saw like half an hour of an episode where it's horrible. I mean, they're exploiting it and they're showing it on TV. Like they should know better. Anyway, that's the point. 
But all those things are things that are in the end going to really hurt your feelings because these people are con people, they're con artists, and it's called catfishing. It's probably not the same picture. You're not talking to that person. They're all making it up because they want something out of you. And then there's the other side where, you know, you really feel like you have a connection with that person and they may start wanting to ask, you know, trade some pictures and whatnot. And that's where that gets dangerous because, I mean, with information out there, sometimes if you know how to dig deep enough, you can find out a lot of information about a person. Like, you know, where they, I mean, mostly on Facebook, where you work on Facebook, everybody, you know, if you add them as a friend, they can see pictures. They can usually see pictures of like you take in your home. So they have an idea. If you have a home that's worth a lot of money and all that kind of whatnot, they might even be able to like pinpoint from seeing outside the window where you live. And I'm not kidding and I'm not trying to scare you with this, but people actually use that to try to find out where you are, if you're worth, if you are worth exploiting, which is kind of scary. So yeah, but on top of all that, if they realize that you might have money and they think you might have money and they want to exploit you and get you in there, you know, they might send pictures of themselves and ask for pictures of you. You know, after a while, I mean, some people are very convincing and heard some of these stories. But then they get all these pictures of you that you don't want the world to see. And then they hit you. You need to send me money or these pictures are going to go public. And then you panic. And what really sucks about that is you can go to the police all you want. It's not a crime. I mean, it is a crime somewhat. All right. It's extortion. But they don't know for sure where that other person is in the world. And sometimes the countries that the people are in... If their police do not want to work with Canadian RCMP, they can't do anything about it. And the biggest one that I do know about is Indonesia. The Indonesian police do not want to work with the RCMP for anything. So if the perpetrator of any kind of crime, any online scam, any online anything is in Indonesia, there's nothing the police can do to help you because the Indonesian police will not let the RCMP do anything against that person, which is really scary. And if they have pictures of you that you don't want the world to see, like, it also comes down to like the fact that, well, you gave them the pictures. You sent them. It sucks when it gets turned down that way. But I mean, does they happen? Can you still do it if you don't trust the person? I mean, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. But again, from working and not as a sex worker, but I mean, a lot of sex workers came in when I worked at the adult store. We had great conversations. Not all of them are exploited. Some of them, hey, good for them. But the big rule of thumb, I guess, if you are in the place where you want to exchange pictures, Make sure that if you send that picture, there's no discerning marks. Like, never put your face in it, all right? Don't put your face in it. And if you have any kind of tattoos or piercings or something on your body that can be linked to you, make sure that those aren't in the picture. So that way, they have pictures of, you know, 18 plus things, and they can put them on the internet all they want. Nobody's going to know that it's your body part, so they can't scan you for anything. I mean, if you feel the need that you have to send pictures. And that's just my advice for today. I have no clue how this is going to end up once I edit it because I've been here and there and everywhere. But I want to thank you all for tuning in and for listening to me ramble on and for putting up with me being all poofy. Ooh, I don't feel very well, but life moves on. Life doesn't stop. And try our best with everything. Thanks. Love y'all.